Hey guys, Armin Gunn here. Today we're back with the SIG 553. Oh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the shooting video yesterday. Definitely kept it pretty short. I went back and edited out a bunch of the talking that I originally had done because, well, that's what these tabletops are for. So we're gonna, this in this video here, we're gonna pop this thing apart. I'll show you how to disassemble this gun. And then we're also gonna take a look at the internals and get a better idea of what makes this thing tick inside. And also, um, taking a little bit of time to explore the similarities, the, the immense similarities between this and an AK-47. So I've got, uh, semi-fittingly, an AK-47 from Western Europe, kind of, uh, Finland, the Velmet series of, of AKs. That kind of, as a Canadian, those are the only AKs. That's the closest to an AK that I can, I can get with a civilian license. So... Um, that, I brought one of those on, on here for today. We're going to look at the internals, specifically the bolt and the bolt carrier. There are some crazy similarities there. It's, it's really cool. This is really, you know, the Swiss the Swiss AK. And in my, my intro video to this gun, which be sure to check that out if you want as well, that went out on Monday. If, if this was a Swiss AK, well, this has to be the Swiss Draco because with an 8.9 inch barrel, this is definitely our shorty. So without any more talking, let's just get into it and start popping this thing apart. Get rid of all this stuff here for now, and uh, yeah, let's let's get into this thing. So, pop the mag, prove it's clear. I'm gonna get this thing out of the way. You know, a little little more of this thing to show you here. I'm teasing it, teasing it more as we go. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll pull it out for the for the overview tomorrow, which I'll release. Yeah, I'll talk about this gun in greater detail, a little more of the history on it tomorrow, and I'll show what what that thing was. Definitely worth sticking around to see that. So, rear pin, it's much like an AR-15 in the sense that it's got a, a removable lower, an upper and a lower. The upper is the serialized portion. I mean, the serial number is copied again on the lower, but uh, the upper is what's considered to be the firearm. <clears throat> so, your pin, pivot pins are much the same as, a, as an AR, except that they have this little detent first. You have to press this in, and what that does is it retracts these two little pins on the sides here. If you can just barely see them. You can see when I push that from behind, those retract. So it's kind of a push-pull. Push this in, and then, well, push-push. And then you push that through. And then those little things, those little nubs, are also going to retain it. So it's not going to pop all the way out. Though you can also, I have to pop up the front one completely to get the upper. This is the lower fully received from the, uh, removed from the upper. But, uh, yeah, because that one doesn't have a provision and there's no room left. So we'll pop this one out as well. A little more, a little stickier this one. I might need the help of a hammer to get that guy out. Oh boy. Very sticky. Oh, one of these pins is sticking on me for some reason there. That's why. Okay. There we go. That's kind of odd. It shouldn't do that. That's why it was getting stuck in there. Okay, so there we go. Completely out. And for whatever reason, this guy on the right isn't isn't actuating when I when I do this. So I've got a bad pin there. I'm gonna have to uh, possibly get a replacement. Anyways, now we have our upper and lower swapped apart. And Folding, folding stock. Again, there's no buffer components back here, so you can shoot this gun folded, which is very nice. And there's where you can see this is your, your bolt catch mechanism. So let me throw a magazine in, which fully locks right into the lower. It's gonna, it's gonna put upper pressure on this, the follower, and that's gonna act as your last round bolt hold open because it's gonna engage the, the bolt hold, the bolt catch device. So again, that's... That's just how that works there. We've got our ambidextrous safety. Now this is a semi-automatic gun. A, a military, a true 5.53 would have single, or sorry, safe, fire, three round burst, and then a 20, which would be just to indicate the full mag. That's it for really the lower. Don't need to get into too much more detail than that there. The upper is where a lot of the magic is. And again, were this a 5.52, I would have already sent the recoil um, spring and guide rod across the room. Uh, that was the main change 
with the with between the five five two and the five five three uh, was that the original five five two yeah everything was just kind of crammed in the back after everything where the five five three adopted the same system that the five five zero and the five five one make use of in which the recoil spring itself is just wrapped around the piston so it's all a self-contained unit much more efficient and again when you break apart the gun you don't shoot the recoil spring out uh, i had a 552 before fantastic gun uh but i you know i would forget and not knowingly i would pop it open and I, twice i sent it across the room once i almost smoked myself in the face so it's it's a good thing to note um which one you have it's also another another very clear indication of whether it's a 552 or a 553 is the charging handle so the 551 or 552 rather had just a little steel nub that came out and the 553 uh, goes back to the same standardized charging handle that the 550 and the 551 also use. So that was another way of noting the difference. And then there was for a time, I guess just to, you can also have a 552 that's also got the internals of a 553. And that was referred to as a 552A1. And that was if, you know, the 552 was kind of re-arsenaled and, and had the upgrades done. So that's a bit of a tangent, but somewhat relevant. So anyways... The way that these bolts come apart, same system that the 5.4 five, five, systems do in the FMAs. So you've got this little lever over here, spring actuated. So you're gonna push this down and you're gonna pull out your charging handle because right now the charging handle is linked with the action. You know, I can cycle this and like there's no, there's no spring back here or nothing. Everything is captured from up front. Um, the spring system is, is all housed underneath the handguard here, which I can, I suppose I can pop this off. Yeah, because it's all retained by the the, uh, the the front pin there. So with the front pin off, pop these off, set those to the side. These are, by the way, are just factory handguards, but they have the B and T uh, rails on the three and nine o'clock position, and again also the slanted one or the one that makes up for that slant on the six o'clock position. So that's your system underneath, and again that recoil system that's been upgraded is all self-contained around the piston. It's all inside here, and because this carrier uh the bolt carrier is attached right to that assembly um that's how that's how that works and that's going to be similar you're going to see really quickly here uh, once i get this pulled apart i might reassemble it just so you can see how they mimic the design of an ak they've just enhanced it so pull that down pop this comes right out and that's your charging handle piece of steel with a rubberized coating on that end okay now this is just going to slide right apart and it is just it's just so so slick, and so smooth. Again, these are these are a steel receiver, stamped steel, and welded. So, they, but it's a really high quality. Again, they don't make many guns that way anymore. Kind of an older generation of of manufacturing techniques. But wow, just gorgeous. And then leave it to Swiss Arms. I guess these are these are made in Germany now, I believe. Uh, four six eight five, four six eight five bolts, carriers, everything is you know they 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 carry that. Uh, they carry that practice of serializing like everything, um, which is which is cool. It's fine. So now here we go. This is this is very uh, suspect of a AK forty seven bolt carrier and the bolt as well. Like even how this thing pops out. I mean that that fit is just perfect. It is. It's just. It's satisfying to disassemble these things and cycle the action because of how smooth it is. Uh, but that's like look at look at how similar to an AK bolt that even looks right. Bolt extractor and firing pin is contained within it. Just gorgeous. And so let's look at the Valmont M78 system here now. So again, pops out exactly the same way. And this is Valmont's made very, very nice quality uh, stuff as well. Look at that. That's uh, that goes to show how similar these things are. Look at that. Look how similar that is. The geometry is, I mean, obviously it's scaled slightly differently. This is firing a 7.62 by 39, whereas this is firing a 5.56, but like they're almost identical in, in, in geo, like, uh, in proportions are going to be off or, well, whatever. Size is different, but, but the geometry is there, similarities. So pop that back in. Oh, I guess I'll show you the carrier as well here while I've got this out. This is that spring loaded system. And this serves as the locking link between 
the um, between the piston system and the carrier. So that's that's just that, and that's just this pops right out. Okay, now I guess I should probably remove this as well. This is your typical Swiss system up front. Pop the detent, spin this over. It's gonna pop up. Pull this whole assembly out. And again, see, this, so this has to come out the front of the gun and the bolt has to come out the back. So you see this recess right here. That's what goes into here. And then this charging handle locks it all in place. And then of course this comes right off. So now look at this and then look at this. So once again, very, very similar. Isn't that cool? Look at that. So now this is where you're going to see it's going to be different from a 552. 552 doesn't have this recoil system on here. Again, that's stuffed into the back, whereas this bolt, everything is sealed off. So, or maybe, yeah. So it's not the same. Um, very, very, it's definitely a different looking system on the 552. Similar, similar concept to what the AKs do is where they, they stuff everything in the back. Although in the back, it's retained into the rear, uh, rear receiver, rear trunnion. So I just really, really need to make that, that observation, that comparison, I find. So I'm getting a bit into the weeds with this video. It's a bit more of a, an internal discussion. I mean, the, the disassembly process is actually quite simple on these guns, but I just think that's so cool. That's, and that's why I refer to these things as the Swiss, um, the Swiss or German rather, um, AK-47s. So Swiss, I think I keep calling it a Swiss because Swiss arms it was called Swiss arms. It was purchased, but I believe SIG absorbed it. Uh, I don't, I should check my details a little, a little more carefully on that. But, um, at the end of the day, that's, they're made in Germany at the, at the moment. So, and that's your piston system. So that's your, your gas tube essentially. And this is your, your regulator. So pretty slick. That's the gun disassembled. Here's another closer look at the upper receiver. If I have a light handy, I'll just shine a bit of light in there for you guys. Just, just like an AK, how that front, that front barrel extended into the, in the receiver, how it locks up and like they're in there like that. So slick. Barrel just threads on. Gas block is all, is all pinned on in there, and then this three prong flash hider. Rings like a bell. If you listen to my shooting video, you can hear the ping, like the the the, the ringing after after each shot. So it's pretty neat. This little guy here, this little piece of tape, I just run these on on the Swiss guns. They don't have a brass deflector. The brass just deflects off the steel receiver, and it chips away at the paint over time. So I thought I would just keep that, you know, keep that taped off. Um, you know, why not? So there's also these little rubber rubber lips here. This is just a you know way of keeping. It's kind of like a dust cover in a sense keeps grit from getting in behind the carrier group and still allows the, the handle to cycle through there. What else can I tell you? I think that's pretty much it. We've got a little backup. This is a flat top model, right? So there's also going to be models that have diopters welded onto the top of the frame, like a rear diopter sight like this, and then a front sight. Uh, I think they're hooded. Um, but this is a flat top. We've got some sling loops back here. We've got this integrated, integrated rear sight which is really kind of stiff to get out. That's fine. So it's adjustable for elevation, little peep sight in there. And then the front little sight blade, which is very minute, very fine right there. And it probably would have benefited from having like a little tritium insert if they could have fitted or something because it's hard to pick up the, that front sight blade, I find anyways, but just me. Anyways, let's throw this gun back together really quickly. And then I'll give you my bonus gun and then we will be on our way. So, toss all this back in. Oh, 
not quite the traditional way. I should have probably put this back together here. Get that out. Click that in. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna rotate. I got this thing upside down now. Rotate that around. properly oriented so that it's I can reattach the bolt properly. I'll just leave that off for now. Put the bolt back in the carrier, same as an AK, slide it in the rear of the receiver. Slides like butter. Links in there. And I'll just move my piston ahead slightly. Lift that up. Pop that back in, push it all the way in, and then pull it a little bit till it clicks and, and, and retains itself. I'll then toss my regulator back in. And with that, guys and girls, we are done. Well, except for the fact that I don't have the, uh, the lower on, I suppose. Let's put our handguard back on. The lower. Locks it in, handguards slide together, locks it everything in. A little tight fit. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. And then lastly, this pen, I'm leave this out right now because I'm going to play with this and see if I can get this thing to work properly. Before I get it jammed in there again and and that's gonna be that so that's gonna be that for this guy bonus gun I wasn't prepared for this I'm just gonna grab something off the wall let's go with the Canadian Draco which is gonna be the VZ 58 this is a little 7.5 inch chambered in 762 by 39 this thing is a ton of fun, honestly, with the brake on it. Recoil is, is very basically minimal. It's just a really fun little gun to shoot. And again, it's also piston operated, uh, but it's, it's again, it's a broken piston. It doesn't, like, it impact, imparts energy on the carrier itself. So it's a short stroke. It's not uh, a long stroke like the AK. Really cool little gun, tons of fun. I definitely need to take this thing out for a range video and do this one as well. So really neat. And if you notice that there, this thing also has a last round bolt hold open as well. So again, kind of an improved AK. This was the Czech AK. Sometimes purists will get mad if I refer to this in any sense of the word as an AK, but um, appearance, if I'm gonna refer to this thing as a German AK or Swiss AK, I'm gonna refer to this lovingly as a, a Czech AK. Um, they definitely did some really cool things. All milled receiver, yet it's still lighter than your average stamped AK. So anyways, BZ58, we're going to have some series on that coming soon. But that's it. That's the show for today, guys. Thanks for checking out. Tomorrow for the full review. Armor Gun out.